Okay, hello to everybody. I'm guest in, here in New England. Uh, with, me, with me are some Azure Hivers. And I hope some of Azure Hivers from the, uh, in the area here around in the United States and around the world. So I will have a presentation about Slovenia apiculture, bees and hives something, some historical background to present day and just a few words about what be the initiative at the end. So Slovenians are very proud on our, to our carnival and bee, uh, which was described scientifically first in 1879 by Bowman as Apis carnica and now it's well known as carnival and bee around the world because it was introduced to the rest of the world from the land called Carniola at that time, which is major part of Slovenia. Uh, since I'm United States, it's nice to mention that most likely uh, a big uh, part in that spread had American beekeeper Frank Benton. Some beekeepers might know him from Benton Cage uh, for shipment of queens uh, for long distance. And actually he invited that cage, as far as I know, as I read his uh, letters and descriptions, that he did that invention actually in Slovenia, that time Carniola, and he kept bees for four years in Slovenia to study Carniolan bees. So that was uh, close to the end of the 19th century and he uh, really moved into Slovenia to study properties of uh, that so well explained great bee and he really recommended that uh, especially for the regions in the states that have harsh winter. So he made also good contacts with Bekeeper Ambrožić from Moistrana. Uh, he got Queens directly from him, and uh, that I saw actually in some of his uh, uh, papers, which I found in archives that I visited this time on my trip. Uh, <clears throat> so among those archives, there are also notes uh, from his travel uh, to our region in Slovenia, uh, former Carnelian County, how his had to spend some money for breakfast and so on. That is interesting to see, to have that indication. But after that, uh, during that trip, he also visited uh, some of Slovenian beekeepers. So after like living for four years in, in late 80s of 19th century, he came back in 1905 to visit uh, Slovenian editor of Slovenian beekeeping journal. Uh, and at that time it was published also his picture in our journal, how he's keeping bees. And uh, in the same year was also a description of uh, uh, friendship between Ivan Lampe and Frank Benton. Ivan Lampe lived in the same town, crying as uh, Benton kept bees for the most of the time in Slovenia. Of course, that was just a kind of, I think, uh, initiation of the bigger export of carniolans, like Ambrosius did later from his big apiary. And uh, part of that uh, story, connection between United States and Slovenia, is also a Slovenian guy who went into the, into the States uh, as a young uh, future priest. He studied, he continued studies in St. Paul and was a priest in that region of Minneapolis. Uh, but during uh, his uh, job, uh, his activities, he started with the beekeeping. That was like in 1909, something like that. And uh, he was recognized as a good beekeeper by University of Minnesota and he was asked to start teaching beekeeping course at the University of Minnesota in St. Paul. And he established that actually uh, in 1913. And uh, from the records uh, that looks like was the first beekeeping teacher in the United States at university level. Uh, 
uh, yeah, how that started uh, with him was it's an interesting story uh, when he was asked to establish a new Catholic parish in uh, Minneapolis in Mount. Uh, he had to get some money to build up uh, a new church. He paid for the land, but he needed money for the church, but he didn't have enough uh, money. So how to how to Get, how to get money to pay off all those uh, loans that he had. Uh, he had a dream about swarms in his orchard and then on the next day he actually captured the first swarm. That's how he started the beekeeping and get some more and more and in, in just two year and two, next year and maybe the next year further, he actually got enough honey to pay off the, the whole uh, the old loans that he got. And the heritage of that is actually a very strong bee lab at the University of Minnesota. And they have a very good extension work uh, with the that they cooperate with the beekeepers. And they have help uh, by the students and beekeepers, and that is called Bee Squad. So they are really doing a great job there now. And uh, Maybe something similar as was uh, in the States was also much earlier in Slovenia or uh, that time Austrian Empire. Anton Jansha was a good beekeeper from Carniola and he was recognized by the, uh, by the Vienna uh, government. Uh, and he was asked to come to Vienna to teach beekeeping in Austin Empire. So that was first beekeeping school actually in middle Europe, I could say. And uh, we are proud on that. Of course, he, he had a great knowledge about bee biology and he applied that in his beekeeping. And uh, like how to keep bees in several sections, how to increase the volume. So it was kind of a modern way of beekeeping, even though he, he didn't use yes movable frames which were invented one century later. And uh, according to this, uh, there is always some present uh, wish for innovations in our area. And uh, they were not always satisfied with the solutions for the hives. They tried to invent new way of keeping bees in the hives. But it looks like that the big houses that we use in Slovenia are kind of framework that all try to use it. And if the hive is not going into the big house, it was not suitable for our way of beekeeping. So Anton Schnidersic who was an uh, innovator in that field. Uh, he was also a very good uh, uh, manager. He has a factory of pasta and he also did some accounting innovations. So, he was very strict in that, uh, a wise man, and along that he also was good in uh, making new hives. And he found out a way to change existing Alberti hive, to modify it to a new hive. So that new hive, uh, he called them as uh, our hive at that time, a Slovenian hive and uh, was later named Alberti Schnidersic. So some are thinking this Anton Schnidersic is actually Alberti Schnidersic hive, but now he's just simply calling it Aje hive. Uh, of course, original design differs from nowadays design, which is maybe more advanced in some details, like inner windows in the hive have double frames and those fra inside frames can be interchanged from one window to another. That's one uh, interesting future which gives you a possibility to turn around also those inner windows to get extra space in the hives. We play that today in one bee house here in England. So that's one possibility. And also one of that inner window is usually has like a feeder which can be used to put inside sugar solutions. So that's a look from the back side and on the left side you have a look from the front side. A typical Slovenian hive, and here is description of all parts of the Aji hive. Of course, uh, it would be hard to go in all those details, but it's a cross section of the hive, and uh, 
the most important is that we have two chambers, brood chambers from honey chamber. That's a typical standard archi hive. And in the front is that hive chain as a kind of landing board for the hive. And we are entering through the hive entrance uh, and the front the bottom side, usually mainly at that side, but also it's possible at upper chain to enter inside, especially if you have a very crowded colony and very active honey chamber, then we usually open the upper uh, entrance. At the back is uh, high close, like with those inner windows that I mentioned, and in addition there are also doors at the back, so kind of double closing, but usually we don't have Beast between those two doors, we usually take care of that. And uh, of course, there's some ventilation uh, laps that on the doors that enable uh, to make better circulation of air at the back side of the hive. So there are many details. So all those are interesting that uh, can get also book to to read all those detailed. Uh, information about the hive, the construction, and so on. So to work with this hive is uh, very useful to have some additional tools on the right side. It's like the frame stand or comp stand, where you can put frames when you are taking them out of the hive. So that's a very useful tool. And uh, sometimes it's good to have two of them or a bigger one uh, to make it easier to have frames on site during a detailed examination of the hive. On the left side is one interesting future, uh, uh, interesting piece of fungi, wooden fungi growing on beech tree that we traditionally use for smoke production in our smokers. Of course you have to hike a little bit in the forest to get there, but as far as I know the same species is grown also in the States, but might be harder to find it as in our country. It's uh, it's good smell, I would say, much better than burning some other plant materials in smoker because you usually get too strong smell for us as well for the bees. So this one is really nice fungi. And uh, another tool is a hive table that can be put at the back of the hive when you're, we are examining the hive. We will see that later also in action. And... Uh, if some bees are dropping down from the frame that you're pulling out, they can just go nicely back into the hive. And uh, on the right side, on that hive table, is also a tool to make a better placement of the uh, frames in the hive, to, to adjust the positions, kind of separator to, to fix uh, the frames in the hive. And there is also a classical hive tool there. And this is one of the, my oldest hive I had. That's really the oldest hive I have. And it is close to 100 years old and still in operation. That's something that is interesting to point out, that sustainability that is possible with Aji Hive. And that additional tool on the doors is uh, good for cleaning the bottom of the hive. And also maybe to cut some uh, wax on the side walls or wherever if it is needed. So that's a kind of long tool that you can reach even to the front of the hive. And typical arrangement of the hive, if you don't have a lot of hives, you can make a small shed to put just few of hives, maybe just two rows of hives on a stand and some roof. It's good to have a rain gutter on the roof that if this uh, if it's rainy and just start at the start of the rain, that bees can still fly into the hives without being hit by big water uh, fall from the roof. And that's one thing why is that good to have a gutter. And other thing is also to, to point out that the roof should go so in front of the hives that uh, during hot summer days all hives are in shadow. So that is helping uh, for overheating of the hives during hot hours of the day. And of course you can make some additional uh, uh, fixation of that structure 
uh, it's kind of primitive bee house, but of course uh, it's much nicer to have a bee house. This is one old nice bee house, one of the most beautiful I, I saw in Slovenia, in, in Savinska Valley, Upper Savinia Valley. Uh, in Rabano Kot, uh, we will see another one from the same valley. Uh, just neighbor has another bee house. This one is active, the previous is kind of not active. And bee house can be also quite a big one, like this one in Idria. Idria is an interesting place, not only because of this bee house, but actually in this town, in the time of Anton Janša, uh, lived a medical doctor, Skopoli, who, who was a naturalist, and he wrote a book in Latin, which was titled Dissertatio de Apibus, and in that book he described for the first time that the queen is mating in the air. And Anton Janša did a more detailed description of that and said that actually the queen is mating with several drones in the air. So this is the history about mating of the queens as well. And uh, that was a little forgotten in the next century, but uh, waking up in the 20th century. So that's also an interesting story. And uh, in the next one, we see just some details how uh, our hives are painted. These are more modern painting of the front boards of the hive. So there can be different styles of these paintings on the other side of this big house. It's slightly different style. So this is not traditional one. Uh, Teams on the highs, but uh, maybe some modern one and related with the local activity. So the bee houses can be different uh, shape. That's my bee house, which was made really from remains of the material from other buildings and some remains of uh, roofing and so on. But you can still make uh, with such material a nice bee house, which 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 shows some care of uh, sustainability like that, using old material and reuse it. So this bee house is now in action. And of course, uh, bee house are now also in the United States. So that's a nice bee house from Suzanne Brouillet in New Hampshire. Uh, that's a new picture from this year with new roofing. So to make a nice, uh, uh, traditional roofing, local roofing uh, for New Hampshire. And uh, she likes uh, our painted front boards. So you see there painted front boards on the hives, uh, which are used uh, to decorate her hives and also different kinds of colors in the hives to set, to make it for the bees easier to, to distinguish where is the exact entrance. Uh, here's Suzanne, uh, inside of the bee house, has very many interesting features, uh, which is related how you can have enjoyable time inside of a bee house. <coughs> uh, on the top of the house, he has also a resting place, and uh, her house has at the back side. Uh, black painted doors which are very useful to make notes with the chores so you can make writing on notes uh, and when you you don't have enough space so you can erase the old one start new one and that's a look inside of the high which is very strong and yeah that's something that beekeeper would like to see a strong bee hive like that and another bee house <coughs> in Massachusetts uh, this beekeeper was very innovative with uh, constructing the hive as well as the bee house, but the hive has some special features that he invented or adjusted according to the uh, tools that he has. Uh, but he get some ideas from existing Slovenian hives and uh, then he made it his own hives like this. They look interesting on one way. He took care for a lot of, for good ventilation, the hives. And these are two small sheds uh, that contains just few hives. 
on the left side three highs on the right one already one after just one but a uh, place for the second one also at Massachusetts on the left side along with the keeper is also Mark Simonich we can see on the next slide his big house which is a bit bigger and quite tall and uh, he's checking his hives inside of the bee house. He was the first one in, for this uh, newer spread of the Aji hives in the States. So he imported first hives, a uh, bigger batch of hives, and that was then continued by Susan and later some are trying try to make Slovenian hives also in the States. So this is how it started. So one nice big house is also down in Mississippi State, having uh, uh, hives imported from Slovenia. Nice big uh, big house and uh, quite a big big house that I visited in Ohio uh, with uh, very strong colonies inside, uh, with actually different source of the hives, but uh, they works. Uh, all works quite well. I will tell, I will write about that a little more after my return to Slovenia. And uh, I like this big house a lot. Uh, there are two reasons. These are Brian's, this is Brian big house. But this painting is really something special. I like in one way this painting. Although same style on the old highs, but it's something special style like that and very strong colonies and that was for me when I first visited him the proof that the Italian bees are making in Argyhai as well as Carniolans so some were thinking maybe different subspecies which is doing a little bit differently in the hives wouldn't work so well but it looks like work might work even better than Carniolans I could say so very very well populated hives and, uh, and now he's using mainly three story hives only he has uh, six two story Aji hives and I guess in this area these three story hives are the best choice. Uh, that's inside of his hives uh, the new the newest version that he has they, they look really well made I could say that. As I said, I will make some more commentary about that. How to start keeping bees in Aji Hive? Uh, the easiest way to use package bees and uh, even just putting hive table inside of the, uh, the back of the hive and just uh, put all the bees on that hive table, shaking out of the box will work well. Of course, you can take the queen first between the frames, it will make it easier but some if they have time they just leave it that uh, box at the back you put queen inside and bees will slowly go inside but if you want to make it faster also shaking bees on the high table is working so that's one thing and here we have a example how I tried to how I actually moved uh, bees uh, into a new bee house that I got recently in our botanical garden and here is one old uh, Aji high that I used to put inside small swarm. I think we will go now with the video I guess. Is that the video already? Yeah it's a video. So I will try to comment that video. So I prepared some out what I need, put my veil on it, open the hive, just check if the hive will be fine. I'm using this claw oil to as a repellent for the bees. It's not very strong repellent, but actually it's really working quite well. Uh, the bees are not so aggressive toward your skin on the hands, removing the inner window and putting on the side, and then I will put that plate at the bottom instead of hive table because that's the only hive at this location so I didn't have hive table here and now I will check uh, what is inside because it was small swarm 
um, I didn't put all frames inside and just pushing on sides some empty frames and half built frames and I'm checking uh, if there is a good brute pattern on the frame so slowly taking count if you're doing slowly of course this will not be exaggerated they will not fight against you what are you doing so they are not aggressive and there was quite good some uh, new new amount of brute on this frame so this is uh, well-established uh, small swarm so because it was a little weak I later added additional brute frames uh, or builded frames from another hive that I put inside yeah this frame the previous one had only mainly open brute but here you can see that there is a good pattern of the uh, caped brute so so that was fine and uh, <clears throat> I put that back into the high and then close the high we could go a little bit forward okay I checked one another high where I put a uh, frame where I put some small frames from uh, mating nooks something we can do also something like that go further please yeah, it's now putting back a little farther to go. Okay, now I'm opening here uh, Langstroth High, uh, where I put actually inside Aji frame, which is a little bigger. So that will be removed one additional sp spacing frame at, at the top. And you can see there two frames, Aji frames inside. Uh, half improvised I could say they have those endings on the side plastic taps that are helping uh, the frames staying separated from the other frames and uh, I put inside just to get additional additional frames for that little weak uh, swarm so this build up that nicely so we can go now I think farther Okay, you saw those steps uh, down because I take out those frames for that smaller uh, swarm. Let's go further. Okay, here you see uh, bigger hives on the left side. Uh, actually, here on the top uh, Langstroth uh, section, like with the Langstroth size of frames, but at the bottom. It's the same size of the uh, section, but it has a little shorter inner length and fits well AG frames. So I, I put AG frames inside uh, that will start building. They didn't start immediately uh, build up uh, uh, foundation AG frames. In the beginning had that section on the top of the LR frames. So they started building slowly. Then I put it down below of the uh, last of the frames. It was better at that time, still without wind excluder. But now I have a wind excluder with last of the frames on the top. So before I put the queen down on an RG frames to facilitate uh, brood in high on RG frames. So now we are opening that, removing, uh, removing. Langstrot section down. Yeah, maybe we can go a little forward. Yeah, this is going down with, together with the cleaning excluder. Uh, now I examining how this uh, section with the RG frame is doing. So one frame with not completely built. Uh, uh, well, yeah, yeah, this is a little better one. Just maybe go farther. Yeah, here we have some, uh, some honey storage on the top of the frame. We have covered honey, and maybe the next one we will have already some brood or, or one farther. Okay, just check that. So, also here I'm working quite slowly, you see, not 
you wearing gloves, it's not a problem. Of course, Kali is a little more pleasant, I guess. This, there, yeah, I like to work with that. Uh, also here in the States. So, already some root pattern, coward root, open root, so that, that was fine. So, that was check up uh, before, one week before I moved this range into Ashikai. So, we, we can go now a little bit farther. Uh, yeah, go further. So, yeah, now I'm preparing for moving the colony into the Ajihai on the left side, which you can see on the left side. Uh, burning that uh, fungi, uh, beach fungi, uh, for, to get the nice smoke for, the, for coming down the bees. We can go maybe a little farther, because it is lasting a little bit. And, uh, yeah, go farther. Yeah, preparing the smoker, and then I also on the side that oh, clove oil and uh, water. Uh, okay, go farther, a little farther. Now we again put down that upper upper section which has lungs of the frames, and of course this is still like lungs of the keeping and some. We have to do some lifting, and this one was really heavy, quite a lot of honey inside after next 10 days. So I have to grab it strongly, and I'm not so strong man, so I had a hard time doing that. So that's kind of a lifting job, and go farther. And uh, yeah, we have here below comes ready to move into RG hives. So go farther to see, yeah. Uh, I will take away those plastic tabs and then I will place frame by frame into archive. So how to remove those tabs is not too difficult, that's quite easy way to do it. They are not too tight and just properly that they hang the frame. So let's go slightly forward. We will see maybe in next frame how that is put inside. Just go forward. Yeah, just put into the high, go further. Yeah, here is next one, a little bit further. Yeah, frame is now back inside. Let's wait. Okay, maybe check this one. Okay. So frame by frame into RG box and then I will remove that length, uh, that uh, kind of length through type box away and put Aji high body on that same stand and bees will go inside, which are flying around. I saw the queen, I think, during that process, and so I was not much worried about the queen. I put that inner. Uh, frame of the inner window inside to fix the frame before moving the whole box. That that was important, and uh, uh, because if the the frames would not be fixed, then you can get some problems. So that's a good way to fix the frames before moving the box. Go a little bit further. Okay, a little bit. Yeah. Now we take away that box where bees were previously and after that I'm going to put my Aji box on the same stand. It was not too heavy because uh, not too much stores of the honey in those new frames so later they will need additional feeding and new stand. So they are back here and I think just before the end, we can see some how bees are flying nicely back into the hive. Just maybe try go a little bit farther. So yeah, just okay. You see here how bees are nicely going into the hive because that entrance is a little bit higher than is now. More bees entering on the top, but I wasn't was not worried too much about that. And that was just a uh, temporal occupation for them because uh, in my new bee house I had already ready new hives, so they will be placed in a new hive. 
once more. Okay, so we can finish this video and go further. Yeah, so it's how to occupy Aji hives with the big colony, like having a swarm or slowly going from like snoot hive into Aji hive. And this is like free story Aji hive that can be used on the right side. It's a really new one that you can get in Slovenia and also from slovenianbeekeeping.com the same hive like this here shown on the right side and the left side is my view that this might be uh, one of the solutions uh, for future beekeeping uh, in Asia type of hive because also slovenian professional beekeeping beekeepers are experienced it's better to have maybe free story Asia hive for higher honey flow and better honey production if you have big honey flow and maybe just something in case would be good to have uh, also kind of backpack at, at, at the back that can be used to enlarge extra in addition the high but there are also other solutions like having 11 frames and extra free frames we will see later there and also like one possibility that I propose in my book for the frames for that can be used uh, pre-wired foundations like having uh, two bars on the top and the bottom on 45 degrees and then you can slip between between pre-wired foundations I know that that's most often the case in, in the States that's one possibility how to do it and uh, of course uh, that can be done uh, maybe with not so professional tools but I saw that how nice can be done RG frames also here in the States so that's one possibility and here are some solutions here if Marian de Belac had some ideas that can enlarge the hive like put three hives together standard hives in one big column and have just one colony inside. I saw one hive like that. It's working but it's, it of course it's not maybe very rational according to the use of space and we don't have all the year a lot of honey flow. So in most cases it's uh, working quite well also two-story hive and maybe having just on site uh, possibility to that extra nine frames at the back like shown the right side could be a good way but I also like this way which is used by most of uh, professional beekeepers nowadays that have a, a lot of hives on their trucks or containers in Slovenia they use 11 frames plus three I'm saying for one section so all together is uh, then 26 frames in one hive and also a very rational use of the space and I saw something like that also in this nice bee house shaman uh, beekeeper in Prekmuri region uh, he has a big bee house with nice painting in front and some special features we will see inside and uh, bees are doing very well in his hives. He has 11 frames, hives, so each frame has numbers uh, of the year that that frame was put in, into the hive. And this picture is from, I think, already two years ago, something like that. Yeah, I think from 2015. And uh, it's interesting, this simple solution without using back doors in those hives, they are made like free three by three on the right side you can see three by three hives together sometimes also four by three hives together and they're not closing with special wooden doors at the back but just putting this polyurethane foam at the back to close uh, the back side but inside is inner window anyway and that's how it looks like this modification of the high lamp plus three uh, that was not occupied so there is a small rest uh, a nest on the top but where it's queen excluder but you can see those supporting three steel bars for the frames and on the side grooves for additional for bars steel bars again which are fixing inner window inside uh, in the hive to push the frames inside so the right side you see just 
between the frames of one honey section, of one weaker hive, I could say, although that so that was uh, just one case, but he has very strong colonies in that uh, bee house. Uh, he wants to produce also pollen, so all those hives are uh, made in that way that he can have inner pollen collect collector, like on the left side. Uh, so some days are better, and other days are not so good, so he can produce uh, quite a lot of honey in this region, but just the time with it was not the best day for pollen collection. And on the right side, you see the way how he's feeding the bees, just having a big uh, container and plastic tube inside, all down to the bottom, that plastic container, and that tube has just small holes that can uh, sugar solution go inside, and bees are walking down to get sugar solution. So at the beginning, they don't need to walk so far, but then go more and more down until practically the whole container is empty. So that's one nice uh, solution that many beekeepers are now using to have such holes in that inner window. They can put inside such a tube for feeding hives. And also these inner windows are sim much more simpler than we used to in traditional and standard Slovenian Aji hive. Here we see some another nice property that he has that visitors can go into the bee house. Also, he can maybe enjoy sometimes some free time inside the bee house, resting in that bed on the side of the hives. Below the bed are two hives, which have meshed uh, holes on the top of the mesh that air can go up, and the whole bee house is a really nice smell and that additional support of air from the bottom hives. And uh, where is the head, uh, place for the head, you can actually see in front of the hives, like in the, on the right picture. So that's a view from the back in the bee house, in front of the bee house. So that's interesting for visitors, which can be in that uh, bee house, which looks like a nice guest house. Uh, with the apartments on the top for the visitors. And uh, that's one interesting way of keeping bees. Um, that's exhibition truck that was brought to one fair for the beekeepers from uh, beekeeper Seragin. Uh, actually started with those big boxes like four by three, three by three uh, hives together uh, with this solution that also previous beekeeper had in his bee house. Uh, and this is my new bee house at Botanical Garden. Uh, I think my new bee house we actually is uh, owned by City of Ljubljana, placed in bee garden, and I'm taking care for this bee house. So I put it inside two colonies already, and it will be nice place for visitors. It's already a nice place for visitors to see how our bees doing in front of the. Uh, hives and inside of the high inside of the bee house so there are different views that's a view to the front of the bee house uh, from the observation plateau in, uh, in on one side of the bee house it's really worth of visiting like that's on the right side of the bee house and can be seen also in a part where beekeeper is doing something when he's doing something and they call it like step closer educational bee house that bee house was actually proposed by the students during workshop uh, during study of architecture in one class they made several solutions and that solution was selected to put here at the botanical garden so i need to post all these uh, possible solutions that they invented and can be used but by anyone. It's a kind of modern or urban bee house uh, which enables uh, interaction with the people, not only uh, a good place for bees and a beekeeper, but also interaction for the people that are interested in beekeeping. So here we see some bees inside. Uh, I think, is that the widow? I think so. I think that's the widow. Yeah. Uh, where I'm showing also later uh, 
how it prepare the colonies. So it's just some maybe getting better impression how the bee house is looking. When I was uh, going around the bee house and making the shot. So it's uh, very well made. It's uh, very good wood for, for such a big house. And the top is flat roofing, which will be green roofing. So that will take care by our botanical garden. And that's in entrance for the big keeper. And uh, of course, this glass enables visitors to see without uh, being in danger by bees. They're afraid of bees at the beginning. Uh, so that's uh, one way how it can be made. So I prepared uh, the whole high, the new established hives for feeding and below were some food and that's some old hives that I'm using for this beehive. Uh, I have some ideas what I will do with those hives to make a new type of beehive out of these boxes and that's something that I will work on in next year. But now we have here two colonies, my old uh, hive table and I also prepared here for for examination so go a little bit farther because not much new here yeah prepared everything like hide uh, frames for the frame stand and opening the hive and going into examination uh, i didn't close completely inner window in this case because <clears throat> i wanted bees to go back slowly inside and then i took care for or inner win inner frame of the inner window with the mesh later to close completely the hive so that at the beginning I was not worried for that. So I did the examination, took a frame out, and that was just the beginning of the examination that I'm showing here in this new big house. I think we are very close to the end of this <coughs> video. Yeah. I'm just taking one frame out a little bit farther. Yeah. Maybe just a little. Yeah, like that. This one is shorter than the previous one. Just taking one frame out. That is beginning steps. Just to check if everything is well with the brood because I think I was not completely sure for the queen, so I checked for the brood. That's the, why I was checked before additional feeding the colony. So <clears throat> I think we are close to the end of presentation. And uh, <clears throat> here is a slide that I would like to make some attention for proposed work B day. Slovenia is making <clears throat> big effort that United Nations would proclaim May of 20 as a World B day. So we already have a good support by <clears throat> food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and uh, <clears throat> it will go into General Assembly in December, I think. And uh, we, are, we are quite convinced to have <clears throat> officially declared World Be Day 20th of May and that's the birthday of Anthony Ansha I mentioned to you before. And we will prepare a lot of stuff that will go on next year around this day so you also may think about it if you will not visit slovenia <clears throat> how we will uh, actually make some extra attention for people in your area about world b day at that time so follow us uh, follow us also on world b day initiative page uh, there is also a facebook page for world world b day that you can follow Okay, I have to thank uh, a lot of people, of course, uh, all those Americans that are really uh, making a big uh, efforts to use our way of beekeeping, like Mark Simonich that I will visit tomorrow and spend some time with him tomorrow, that he started this new movement, and uh, like Susan Broyet, that is taking care of Slovenian beekeeping uh, company now and uh, trying uh, <coughs> to promote this way of beekeeping along with 
visiting Slovenia, so you're welcome to do that, contact her. And, uh, uh, and also René, who is making great things here uh, down in Massachusetts with uh, B art. And <clears throat> of course, there are some many others, like I mentioned previously, I visited also Brian earlier in this trip. So that's how you can find me. And of course, if you don't have already book, I should be keeping Slovenian Hive, you can get that at Create Space. And uh, there is also a way to get promotional code for that through my blog spot. Uh, you can read there some notes about uh, my recent activities and there will be also some notes about this trip as well so welcome and follow us also in future thank you for your attention do we have some questions it looks like we have some questions maybe Rene can read the questions and I can tr try to answer I can certainly do that um, we have a question from Tina McDonald and she wants to know what was the oil that you rubbed on your hands for bee repellent? Yeah, that's a clove oil. Clove oil. Clove oil, so just not diluted, just straight oil of clove? Yeah, it's nearly straight oil. Okay. Just few drops and you just okay. put it around you. And another, another question we have is, um, why is it so hard to find plans to build the Aja Hunt? Oh. Yeah, it's it's funny. I, I, the oldest posted plans are actually on my old uh, university page. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they are not very in detail, but in general, a craftsman that get the main idea, like getting the frame size and how many of the frames has to be inside, and having in mind a B space can make a good beehive, but could be a good craftsman. So that's one thing. Um, of course, later I, I published, you can find on my blog spot some newer uh, newer plans for the Archie Hive. Of course, they are not like that to put that in CNC machine and you will get Hive out. That's definitely not. So I didn't uh, publish the kind of electronic design plans. Uh, I'm not sure, nobody really likes to put that out, especially those which are making hives, I guess, because they, they, they keep that for themselves. Uh, so somebody, if, if doing with their own tools, have to figure out how to make it from those plants or buying one hive at least and see how it is made and try to reproduce. But uh, from my practical point of view, I'm saying that it's not so easy to make a good Aji hive. So, for the beginner, it's not the best way to start with own made hive, but rather have a new bot hive. That's that's uh, definitely the best solution. And uh, I also experience from my uh, beekeeping, it's not to have, it's not good to have very different kinds of uh, hives from different kinds of makers because then you cannot change parts from one hive to another hive. So. Something's very good to, to keep along with the high system, the high build uh, that you have. So that's not so easy. Okay, thank you. Um, we have another question. Um, are there any le any legal issues or concerns in Slovenia regarding opening the bee houses for visitors to spend time in? And has anyone been injured or been sued? No, not from this point of view. You know, if somebody is visiting a beekeeper, is visiting because uh, wants to see the bees and has to be aware of potential stings from the bees. So usually those which are accepting people as the visitors, <coughs> they 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 uh, tell them that their own, you know. Uh, that they, they they cannot ensure that there will be no stinging. So that's definitely one thing that people have to take in account. So it's not uh, actually there's no such a case that somebody say, okay, I want I visited the beekeeper and the bee stung me and they didn't get anything out of that. So I think that that never happens really. 
but <clears throat> there might be just some neighboring stuff like if they have a big house in the city and very close to the to the neighboring place that piece of flying there sometimes maybe it's really a beekeeper's fault it's too close the next time maybe some you just don't like the neighbor <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, no, not in many cases so. so in slovenia there's a lot more involvement with children learning beekeeping yeah. practices yeah Okay, that, that, that's, uh, I think there is no other country in the world to have so many children clubs in the schools yeah. in Slovenia. They actually definitely. teach it in some of the Yes, of the uh, yes. Uh, it's, they have also elective courses in primary school and also at, high, uh, in high, at uh, uh, next level in uh, high schools. Uh, along with this elective course, are even more often beekeeping clubs that are uh, mentoring by beekeepers and sometimes also with the teachers. Sometimes combination, sometimes is also teacher beekeeper. Mm -hmm. That's not so rare. So they are mentoring the kids and we, there are different levels like uh, lower class level, middle class level, upper class le classes level. So usually it's three levels of these club activities adjusted to mm -hmm. the age of the pupils so that is working well we have each year also state competition uh, so there there are coming like 500 kids to that competition along with men additional mentors and so on or other people yeah. so it's a big event and painting of the bee panels also and kids are actually yeah. working directly with the bees yeah. not only you know they, they're wearing bee suits and working with the bees and uh, of course uh, Parents has to be aware of that and uh, possibility of stinging. So the kid who is allergic, too much allergic to the bee sting, cannot really attend attend such live activities, but still can attend some other activities in such club. Okay, and I have a few questions about management issues. Okay. Um, first, we have here um, from Andrew Tatchell in England. He wants to know how, how the Aja nukes are managed when a five or a seven colony, frame colony, gets too big for their hive. He has one bee house that he wants to move the bees from within a nuke in the same bee house into the, the two level Aja hive and try to keep the bees in a new. In a new uh, Okay, uh, of course, if that new home will be just just into the new, it's no problem. That would be the best situation. And if it's just into the new, that would be the best thing, really. Okay. Then you just place that new uh, all frames from the new into that new high. And if, when you close from side high entrance and also uh, high chain, uh, this will simply work into the adjacent hive and that's their colony. But, but even if you have that place occupied with the bees and just, just on the other side of the bee house and under the empty hive, that wouldn't be too bad. So, so you can, can put all the cones into the new place uh, and, <coughs> and then of course you have to close uh, uh, close the hive, hive entrance and then you brush bees if there's some young bees you can just uh, uh, shake them into the new hive and of course some uh, forage will fly out and try to go back but since the close and the entrance is closed they, they, they will uh, go to the neighboring hive so the bees will accept them because if they would be hungry they, they would have a problem so uh, during normal nectar flow is usually not a problem at least a little bit of nectar flow, otherwise it would suggest maybe the previous day to feed the bees. They, they would be well fed bees and uh, they, they will be accepted by the other hives. So that's, okay. that's going to be worked out in the same location as well. Okay, and um, with regard to equalizing hives, what, what do you recommend? How many frames of brood? Like, if you have a bee house, you have 12 hives, and you want to. How many okay. frames of brood? Okay. Uh, I'm not always uh, 
too much in favor of equalizing highs. <coughs> That's one reason because the very strong highs will bring most of the honey, so they're most productive one. So of course, if they're on the margin, they will go into swarming. You can use really then some kinds of cover rule that you can take into one of the weakest high and make that one stronger. So that's that's usually the case because the they're too strong according to the space they have that that then you have to enlarge space in that way if you don't have inside of the hive to put brood somewhere else then you have to take this brood out and put it in another hive so in two section hive that's a typical way to do it so when it's very strong hive on the margin of swarming to take some uh, frames with the the brood and take to the weak one or making splits something like that so that that's the way how to do it otherwise uh, if you have like three section hives you might not do that because you would like to keep a very strong colony so because strong colony is usually producing much more than two semi strong colonies mm -hmm. so that's the case Okay, and with regard to doing the splits of a very of a very strong colony, how do you do those? How do you do the split? Okay, so if the colony is not, you need a new colony, and the colony is not going is not prepared already for swarming, so you don't see any queen cells. In that case, I would use like two mainly uh, two frames, if mainly caped brood together with the bees and one frame which is mainly honey frame from the same hive put that on side and use that to, to establish new nuke like five frame nuke and then you add just two additional uh, frame with the foundation so that's the the base what are you doing if that's the same bee house I would suggest maybe to shake one additional frame of the bees uh, from the brood uh, to shake bees down uh, into that established new to increase population of young bees because you're losing foragers if that's in the same bee house. I'm usually doing like that and uh, that colony, such a colony will make quite nicely through the season and grow up to a good sized colony that can be even maybe placed in, in normal hive mm -hmm. or used next year. So that's the best way to do it. But if you, if the colony is going into the uh, swarming activity, then it's suggestion to find the queen and take queen out and rear new queen in in old hive or using uh, already uh, or or take away all queen caps and then using uh, a new queen to replace the queen in that hive or whatever, there are several possibilities to requeening or doing uh, rearing in that hive based on established uh, uh, queen uh, swarm caps, but some don't like to go along with swarm caps to increase, uh, to keep along uh, uh, traits for swarming activity, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's one thing why some are not like doing that, but if the colony was one of the first to go there, it might be also very strong colony. So this might be just indication that you a little bit for, uh, was too slow with enlarging the, the volume of the hive, the number of the frames to put new foundations inside and so on. And do you requeen re -queen your hives every year or do you...? Um, uh, not really, So, but... Uh, like, but usually I don't have more than two years old queens, so that's also true. Uh, but I'm trying going in this direction to to have um, at least for for productive colonies one year old queens. Mm -hmm. So to replace in production colonies and get one year old new queens for the next year because that will ensure that you will not have so much work to do with the swarming activity in next spring. It will be easier to go through. And uh, if you have some good queens, 
then better to put that good queen for queen rearing in one nook or seven frame nook or something like that to overwinter that queen and it's making good for overwinter then you are running new queens from that brood and that that's a, a good way to do it if you have some good queens uh, not just to kill them or you know it would be better to to save them for queen rearing if they did really very well in the previous season and one last question um, how do you manage the varroa Okay, that, yeah, that's always tough questions, and uh, I, I could say that maybe last 10 years I'm not using any more synthetic acaricides, so I'm using organic acids and essential oils, and this last year and this year I'm counting mainly on formic acid in summer, and then in early winter when it's warm enough using oxalic acid rippling if they need additional treatment so that's the main main treatments that i'm doing and uh, last year worked really well mm -hmm. so i was satisfied last year because i get good overwintering although in my surroundings there will be keepers that lost also all the hives so it looks like I did a good job, but the most important thing is to see what is going on in the in colonies, not just put treatment inside and forget what is going on. Mm -hmm. So to check how mites are dropping down, how how many mites are left in the colony. So just using also sugar rolls are in quite good tool to support this activity. So not just counting what is on the bottom, also do some sugar rolls. Mm -hmm to get uh, uh, what is really left of the bees and uh, of course it's also worth opening some even even worker brood cells if there are no drone brood cells mm -hmm. just to be sure that they are doing quite well okay. okay so thank you very much if there will be some more questions we, I can try to write down in my blog later okay Thank you. Let's stop.